John Galbraith was an American economist, and one day he said to his housekeeper, Emily, Emily, I want you to hold the phone for one hour. No phone calls because I want to take a nap. So away went Joel Galbraith. He let down and took a nap. Anyway, 10 minutes into his nap, what do you think started to happen? Ring, 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 ring. Hello? Hi, it's Lyndon Johnson. I'd like to speak to Mr. Galbraith, please. Oh, hello, Mr. President. I'm sorry, but Mr. Galbraith is taking a nap right now. A nap? Well, wake him up then. No, I'm sorry, Mr. President. I work for him, not you. And apparently, as soon as the phone call ended, Mr. Lyndon Johnson said, that woman is remarkable. Bring her to the White House. I want her to work for me. You see, my dear friends, loyalty is very hard to find, isn't it? But I believe there is one person in the Bible who is more loyal to the Lord Jesus Christ than anyone else. In fact, I'm going to raise the bar. I believe this person is the most godly woman who ever lived. Who am I talking about? Mary Magdalene. You see, Mary had one motivation, one inner compulsion. She wanted to be near the Lord. This is a woman who, before she met the Lord Jesus Christ, she was very lost. The Bible is so descriptive. It says that she didn't just have one demon, not two, but seven demons occupied this woman's life. And somewhere in her past, she'd opened herself up to the kingdoms of darkness. But when she met the Lord Jesus Christ, the light of the world cast those demons out of her and made into one of the most godliest saints in history. My dear friend, that is the beautiful message of the gospel. That's why it's good news, because it doesn't matter how you started in life. It doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter what your pedigree is. It doesn't matter how much you have messed up. The main thing is this, how will you finish? And everyone who comes to the Lord Jesus Christ has a promise of a beautiful ending because Christ changes all and gives every single person who comes to him a fresh start, a fresh beginning, and a hope beyond the grave. So, why was Mary so loyal? Well, because those who've been forgiven much, love much. And the day that she met the Lord Jesus Christ is the day that Mary's agenda died. She surrendered all to Christ. She was sold out. It's almost as if she gave Christ a blank check and said, fill it in, Lord. I'm totally yours. I'll do whatever you say. She funded Christ's ministry. She called him Lord, and she followed him all the way from the northern town of Magdala, all the way to the south of Jerusalem. Everywhere Jesus went, Mary went too. She even followed him to the cross. When all of the disciples scattered, except for one, when all of the disciples forsook the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, Mary stood there. Mary stayed. She saw the Lord Jesus Christ being mocked, being scorned. She stood in the crowd as Christ had nails driven through his hands and his feet. She saw the spear in his side. She saw the spit on his face, the blood running down his brow. She saw Christ suffer the most agonizing death. Why? Because love endures all things. Here's a question for you. Have you ever heard people say, God is against women? The Bible looks down on women and sees women as inferior to men. Let me prove to you why that is total nonsense. When Jesus Christ did the most colossal event in history, when he did the most important thing to mankind, when he rose himself back from the dead, who did he appear to? He appeared to loyal Mary. And when he was doing that, when he spoke to Mary first, he was making a very bold statement to the whole of the world. He was saying, even though this culture right now sees a woman's testimony as invalid, I am telling you all that a woman's testimony is valid, it is credible, and women and men are equal, and that's why I've appeared to Mary Magdalene. The Bible says, now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, and did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Now, perhaps I'm reading too much into this, but do you not find it fascinating that Mary mistook the Lord Jesus Christ for a gardener. Why did she not think he was a soldier, an undertaker, a farmer, a fisherman? Why did Mary think Jesus was a gardener? Well, could it be this? Many, many years ago, a man, Adam, stood in a garden and through that one man's rebellion, he brought into the world sin suffering, pain and destruction. But here we have another Adam, the last Adam, there won't be another. The Lord Jesus Christ again stands in a garden, but this time he brings hope, restoration, 
life and renewal. That's why I think Mary mistook Jesus for being a gardener. I don't know what's going on in your life right now. Perhaps at the moment you're feeling the blessing of the Lord and you're knowing a real joy, a real great period of life. But perhaps you're not. Perhaps right now you're in the darkest period of your life. You feel alone, you feel broken, you feel like you've been left. Well, I want to remind you, when we are going through our darkest trials, when, like Mary, our eyes are filled with tears and we feel so alone, Jesus Christ is stood there all along. Even though, like Mary, we can't see him, he's never left us. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. So today or tomorrow, when you feel like you're struggling, don't miss the Lord like Mary. Make sure you open your eyes and see he's here. He's holding my hand and he will not let go. He will guide me through this difficulty. Okay, if you're writing down notes, write this down. Mary has muscles. Twice we see Mary Magdalene prepared to flex her muscles for the Lord Jesus Christ. The first time is here where she thought that Jesus Christ was the gardener and she said to this gardener, tell me where you have laid the body and I will take him away. So here is this little woman who just wants to make sure that Jesus has the correct burial, the right embalmment, the right spices and she is prepared to carry a grown man from one side of the cemetery to the other. Now I know what you're thinking, you're saying Joe we don't know how big Mary Magdalene was and you're right we don't know how big she was but there's one thing I do know there are very few women there are very few men who could carry a grown man from one side of a graveyard to the other but Mary was prepared to do it. Why? Because love bears all things. Now, what I'm about to say next, some of you are going to say, speak for yourself, Joe. But I personally believe that Mary Magdalene was more dedicated to what she thought was a dead Jesus Christ than what many Christians, including myself, know to be the risen Lord. She would do anything for what she thought was just a dead body. And yet we know that Jesus Christ is risen from the grave. And when he says, obey me, worship me, spend time with me, we so often neglect our duties the risen Lord. But the second time we see Mary prepared to flex her muscles is in John chapter 20 verse 17. It says, Jesus said to her, do not cling to me for I have not yet ascended to my father. Did you catch that? Because Mary is holding on to the Lord Jesus Christ so tightly because she's thinking in her mind, I can't let you go. I've been separated from you once. I can't lose you again. What does the Lord Jesus Christ have to do? He has to say, stop clinging to me. I wonder now, could Christ Jesus say that to you? Could he say, you're holding on to me too tight? Stop clinging to me. Like Jacob, do you remember Jacob wrestled with God? He said, I will not let go of you until you bless me. And so God had to physically wrestle him off. Jacob, does God have to do that to you to wrestle you off him because you're so close, you're so tight in communion with him? Or does God have to wrestle us off? other things? Does God have to tell us to stop clinging to other sins, to other idols in our life? Because so very often we'd rather choose darkness over light. If we're honest with ourselves, we've all clinged to that which we shouldn't. But I do believe that every true Christian should know something of how Mary Magdalene felt that day. We've all sort of had that prayer time where God has been so close to us that it's almost as if if we reached our hand out, we could touch God himself because he's been so near. And we cry out to him in that moment, Lord, don't leave me. Don't go, don't send me back to the world and all my problems. I just want to be near to you. I just want to be close to you. Perhaps at times we've listened to a sermon or we've watched a message online and it's almost been as if God himself has pinned you to that seat and the preacher who's speaking knows every single thing about you. And it's not because there's anything special about the preacher, but it's because the Holy Spirit is dealing with you in that moment. And you're thinking in that very moment, I don't want this message to end. I don't want this sermon to end because God is speaking right now. If we've not known this for a long time or if we've never known it, like Mary, we need to rise early to find the Lord. When she went to that tomb that day, she went in the fourth watch, which is between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. She rose early to find the Lord God and you and I need to go back to basics and meet with the Lord God first thing in the morning in prayer 
and studying the word. A dear brother, an elder of the church I used to attend, a man called Alan White, he used to preach beautiful sermons. And I remember once he said, instead of singing the, the hymn, take time to be holy, we're gonna sing that hymn, but we're gonna sing it a little differently. Let's change the words to take time to behold him. And my dear brother, my dear sister, we all need to take time to behold the Lord Jesus Christ because the world does rush on. But hey now, there's one thing I can guarantee to you. There's one thing I can promise to every Christian who's watching this video right now, and it's this. I promise you that you're glad that Mary Magdalene did not find what she was looking for that day in the garden. That Mary did not find a dead body. She found the risen Lord. Here is this woman who came to the Lord Jesus Christ with baggage, with problems, even demons. And Christ transformed her life and made it into one of the most beautiful trophies of grace. Why did he do that? Because Christ always cleans the fish that he catches. Have you come to the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you let his blood wash you whiter than snow? That blood that was shed on the cross cleans us, washes us, and gives us a new hope, a new start, a new beginning. Can you, like Mary Magdalene, say that Jesus is my Lord? And not just any Lord, he's the risen Lord, and I will surrender all to him. Here is my blank check, Lord Jesus Christ, and just fill it in. Do what you want with my life because it belongs to you. Are you prepared to obey this Lord? And even though at times you have desires and things that you want to do, you say, I lay them all down because Jesus Christ is worthy of following and I will follow you wherever you will go. If the answer's no, you know what I'm gonna say to you. Come to Christ and watch him transform your life like he transformed that loyal woman, Mary Magdalene's life. And if the answer's yes, stay with him, stay loyal, stay close to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because it's not about how you start that matters. What really matters is how will you end. Perhaps right now you're the person I was talking about earlier and you're going through a really dark trial. If that's you, please watch this video. I think it might just help. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please do consider subscribing. I'd be so grateful to see you again on this channel. God bless you all and thank you for watching.